Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Card Talk, a podcast where we spend just a little bit of time talking about cards from Lord of the Rings Card Game. I'm your host, Dave Walsh. And I'm Grant Thompson, just along for the ride. And certainly not last is Ted, and I love to talk about cards. That you do, Ted. We, uh, <laughs> love, that, we love that you talk about cards. I, I love that you love loving to talk about cards i know and that's precisely all... what we're gonna do i know on but we're gonna show. be doing it from a sitting position. i love cards and talking about them so much that i can't stand it there we go okay. <laughs> there it is <laughs> I, was gonna... I can't stand it though that's that's precisely the point of today's show so right. we're gonna be uh discussing we have a great episode for you right after this message for the patrons exactly right it's not uh it's it's because of the patrons that this show is possible we have a small but dedicated fan base that uh, gives a couple of bucks a month and it's been growing and growing and growing ever since we launched the podcast so we're actually up to as of the recording of this episode 42 patrons and that is amazing i am so thankful for that also as this show is going to get released realize that if you want the major swag I'm, i call it major but we're going to give swag to everybody every person who deserves a little something from us but if you want to get swag at the five dollar level and up it has to be you have to be a patron by may so this month by the end of may i'm gonna cut it off so and i have to be a patron at the five dollar level so if you want to become a patron you can go down and look down way down below ted there and there is a website patreon.com slash card talk 2018 and you can become a patron um, every little bit helps and we're just so thankful for everybody so the patrons in order i think at 42 i think you guys have finally achieved it being uncomfortable for me so <laughs> that's, I, that's always been our goal from the start is i know to make david uncomfortable i know no, well, our goal was to make him pass out he hasn't done that yet <laughs> So I am going to try very hard to read these all in one breath, but there's 42 names and they're new. Some people are new, so I don't know. We're going to go. Okay. Let's go. Thank you to Grant, Katie, Eric, Rachel, Tony, Valentin, Eric, Duren's father, Moritz, Anders, Shane, Micah, Chris, Reagan, Robert, Brandon, Scott, Joe, Alex, Edmund, Peter, Niall, Carl, Vardane, James, Joshua, Matt, Russ, Justin, Jason, Robert, Kyle, Daniel, Mike, Robert, David, Sean, Lou, Phil, Joseph, and Dominic. Ah! I stopped in the middle because I had to swallow, not because I had to breathe. So, <laughs> so there it is. 42 patrons and you'll notice the first two names that i read were grant and katie so grant after four years have decided to <laughs> become a patron of the show thank you buddy no i appreciate that but uh, katie who is um grant's partner was a guest on the show talked about leadership gimli ally that's good i'm happy that uh, that there's value enough in the show for somebody's significant other to become a patron so yeah that's really good you're not the first couple to be on the a patron of the show but i appreciate it so that just means you get the you get the swag now in in, <laughs> in october grant <laughs> well that's all i did it for really <laughs> yeah right <laughs> in october you'll go back you won't become a patron anymore uh anyways um i think that um the patrons probably don't want to hear much more about this but they probably tuned in to talk about today's card so grant why don't you talk about today's card? That is going to show up right here. You'll notice we're doing a little bit of different formatting here. We're going to keep everything going. I have Ted down down below me and Grant over to the side here. So we're going to see how this works and see if uh, yeah. this helps Unless out. you're on audio and then it doesn't matter at all. Then it doesn't matter at all. So <laughs> <laughs> what it does is it helps me focus a little more on the cards and a little less on the production of the show when I do this. So, um, But that said, Grant... Can you stand it? What's today's card? Well, if you let us get the last word in, I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are talking about the last stand from Flight of the Stormcaller, the zero-cost tactics event 
from the flight of the Stormcaller. It has the res response, after a warrior character is destroyed while defending against an enemy attack, deal damage to the attacking enemy equal to that character's permanent attack power. Mm-hmm. Ta-da! <laughs> okay. Well, should we ring this thing? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm. We'll just uh, we'll touch joking. on it and uh, give it a give it a couple of points. Yeah, I mean, here's here's the thing, and I'll start a little bit on it. Um, you know, I'm not I'm not a um, big fan of direct damage. It's fun, but I find when I'm playing solo and I'm trying to build a direct damage deck. It's it's hard. I mean, one of the staples. I, I come from a Magic: The Gathering background back early days in the in the mid '90s. So like when Alpha and Beta were released and stuff like that. And then I got out of it for a long time. But you know, like it's one of the many people still, <laughs> <laughs> you know. And but but one of the fun archetypes to play was a direct damage deck. You could fireball and you could do chain lightning and you could do all these these uh, fun. Um, direct damage things and so when i try to build a direct damage deck i want it to be only direct damage so i include things like thalon and argolad and bilbo and you know these these things that allow us to do damage directly <laughs> direct damage right so and, and it never seems to ever take off it's just it always is lacking. So I feel like direct damage would be fun if I had multiplayer, I had many people playing, and I could focus on doing some direct damage and using Argolad and, you know, Thalon and, and you know, the Gondorian Spearman and the and the Spear of the Citadel. But I find that, you know, a card like this, man, you really have to be dedicated to building a direct damage deck to put this in a deck. I, I've, I've not ever fired this card off and I think I may have even cut it from a direct damage deck that I built. So like, it's it's one of those things that, I don't know, like you just, I don't know, there's there's lots of good warriors, I guess, that can target it. And, and it's in the right sphere, but I don't know. Grant, what do you think of this card? I think this card has potential. I mean, I've never actually used it in a direct damage deck, mainly because I generally don't run a lot of heavy allies lately, so <laughs> needing this card... Fourth, fourth the three hunters? When Grimbjorn, yeah. when Grimbjorn leaves play, you just you can <laughs> load up the damage. That's three damage. Yeah. That's yeah, character, right? So it can be your warrior hero if it bites yeah, you. It yeah, could but be, it's, only, uh... it's only printed willpower, printed attack. It's not printed attack. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but no... Um... I think in a direct damage deck, this could have potential. As you were saying, you'll jump with like a Skondorian Spearman after it's already dealt a damage with Thalen, there's two damage. With Argolad, that's three. And if it's got more than that, then maybe the extra one or two hit points, attack points from other direct damage effects could knock it out. Um, so it's got potential, whether or not it would definitely see more use, I think in multiplayer because it's just after a warrior character is destroyed it doesn't have to be a warrior character you control right that is a great so, point grant that i did not even consider so it it's, can be any warrior that leaves uh that yeah. is destroyed so when yes. so so ted can play this when grimbjorn leaves play i can <laughs> <laughs> when Grant's playing Grimby Art. Uh, put that on the list of, like, convention achievements. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, oh, my of, God. How hilarious would that be? Kind of the rings. Someone else's up. hero. It doesn't have to be. It could be Grimbjorn. It, it could yeah, be Baragon. Yeah. Or can die, right? Someone any... bites the bullet. <laughs> and right. you're like, oh, it's cool, though. I'm going to last stand. <laughs> <laughs> Right, and it doesn't have to be a printed warrior trait. It could so if we give Nori, if our friend um, Aaron uh, from Cardboard of the Rings, you know he. Um, so I'm gonna. <laughs> he's Nori doesn't have the printed uh, the the printed warrior trait, but uh, right. you but can, give can give him the that diligent with, uh, mighty warrior, warrior. Or mighty warrior, right? Right, and then you can uh, and then you can <laughs> when Nori defends an attack and leaves play, like ha. two cards, one resources, a dead, a dead hero for two damage. <laughs> right, <laughs> that would be perfect. I see a tech uh, here going on. 
I see a I see a plan is forming. I know. <laughs> okay, sorry to interrupt there, Grant, but it, it was inspirational. It was inspirational. Yeah. Um, but like I say, it's got potential. And I haven't really ran a direct damage deck. Yes. We just lost Grant. He hasn't really. That's it. That's it. That's how. That's, fu- that's how I, finished his statement. Oh, there he is. There he is. <laughs> I'm back. Uh, sorry, I don't I... run direct damage. Mic no, drop. Uh, <laughs> I generally don't run direct damage. Call me for the next episode. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I could build something fun to play with, with all the um, different things going on. It might be a little bit janky. It might not even work, but I might think about toying around with the idea. <laughs> Sure. Ted, other than trying to figure out a way to kill Grimbjorn on Grant's board, let's see, <laughs> grief grief move, just so you can play Last Stand, uh, what are your thoughts on this card? Um, Yeah, it's, it, it's not particularly strong. I think that's kind of the point we've been making with all the jokes. Um, it does have its place, and I think, David, you, you nailed it, where... Uh, even in direct damage decks, it, it doesn't make the cut uh, exactly. Uh, that is where it's best suited because it, it can be the extra point or two of damage that you need. Ideally, you don't want your characters to die, right? That's kind yeah. of what this card is. Is It's like a plan for failing. Right. When I think most players have the mindset of like, well, I'd rather just plan to live. Right. I mean, right? the Gondorian Spearman is a warrior, right? But yeah, what's his so- printed attack? Uh, one. Right. So one. is it worth, you know, putting an extra one? So it, yeah. you get two, you get two direct on the four, you know, like that's when I talk about these cards, I I know that I usually talk about the archetype that they fit into, but you know, like not every well, card has to fit into the, that particular yes. deck's archetype. Right. So to, to your point that you were making, Ted, and like you were saying it exactly right is that you know this card i mean you could put it in just a regular deck you have tactics you have the spear match and you're running you know 10 or 15 warriors you know you could put it in that deck but i think that that deck slot is more important for other things to make your deck successful as opposed to a slot for hey what happens if i'm going to not be successful uh yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Right. Um, that's because... and that's what I was saying is that right. So go ahead. Um yeah, so I'll see it um I've seen it played in Prince Immerhill decks because he's so very commonly built around the warrior trait cuz that's his strongest. Mm-hmm. Um you know, and he's the tactics hero Immerhill. Um so he's pulling warriors out of his deck and th- <laughs> there's some application there. Where is he pulling warriors out of? Out of his deck. Oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> among other places yeah right. um and blast you know wherever they are from um <laughs> <laughs> so ideally you want to recycle good characters but it's possible with him where you you pull out a uh you pull out someone that's got i mean the most the highest printed warrior allies probably got three attack i don't know if there's any four is that that even many four printed strength characters? There's that Ent, right? And then I think that's it. Right. So the most you're going to do with this is three. So you could pull out an ally with Imrahil, uh, chump that ally, and then last stand them to get the block, and then three damage goes out. And that's probably the best application or the best one that I've seen played. I have only put this in a deck where I've uh, played a, a draft format, and I was like, I ended up drafting, I think, one or two copies, maybe. <laughs> I happened to be blocking with a warrior character, and I'm like, sure, I'll do this extra damage. Right. I mean, it's in and, my hand. And to its and to its credit, I mean, it 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 doesn't hurt. It's not like it's you know, it it's something that happens. Like if you do, lo- if you're chumping, if you're planning on chumping, like you know, like it's something that you could do. I guess you know, it's but. I don't know. Bayorn is a let's let's go through. So Bayorn is a um, three uh, three attack warrior. Yeah, um, there's there's a couple. There's there's Bayorn, which hopefully he's not. He's leaving play for his attack ability. Legolas. Uh, 
yeah, there's Legolas, which is three. A Zane is three. Um, there's plenty of other generic warriors too. Uh, Knight of, I want to is it Knight of Minas Tirith? Knight of Minas Tirith. Yeah, he he's one of my favorite cards. The the veteran of uh, Nandahurian. Yep. So there there's there's a ton. And Glorfindel, ideally, which yeah, <laughs> which actually may not be bad because Glorfindel. Sometimes you sacrifice. He does him because he can. Sometimes. He can come back into play because you're playing him from. I'm talking about Ally Glorfindel, right? And yeah, so, and like, because he can, spirit. you can play if you have, you know, something like that. The Marksman of Lorien, Soldier of Erebor. Yeah, I don't see anybody with four printed. I don't see any allies. I'm assuming we're not going to lose a, a hero here, right? But there's uh, there's eleven, ideally, <laughs> right? But... <laughs> However much we would, you know, joke around with Grant to uh, yeah. to but lose Grim You Bay. know, I've seen it played, and someone is they they lose their hero, and they're like, "Well, I'm going to do two damage to this guy on the way out," mm-hmm. and it, it's surprising how that makes an impact still. You know, now if that card was something else, right? Like a uh, you know, a, a feint or something, uh, you know, to stop the attack altogether. Like, yeah, sure. There's plenty of other things you can do, but uh, it's, it's, it's got a, f- a few uses and it's certainly I think direct damage just in general plays better in multiplayer. David, you made a good point there. Mm-hmm. I think it's more commonly people will bring that type of deck to a convention because then they sort of have room to, to apply the direct damage and then help the table out. Uh, with things like Thalin and, and Bilbo and archers. Yeah, and, and to and, and to that point that, that we're talking about is that, you know, those cards that are that you use in a direct typically don't overlap with some of the other cards, uniques and things like that that people would be running. Like you're not gonna use Gandalf in a direct damage deck. Uh, I'm sorry, you're not gonna use Hero Gandalf in a in a direct damage deck. You may use core Gandalf because it does four damage when it enters play. But you know, right. those those sorts of things, like you're not gonna run into like you may not need Steward of Gondor. You know, you may not be running leadership. So you know like any of those unique conflicts you may not have. So direct damage probably to your point makes more sense to be in a you know three or four players setting. Yeah. So just uh that's it. That's the couple of points I wanted to make. It's got a it's got a couple of places. Are there better choices? Yeah, and just generally, yeah, we want to, you want to plan for plan for success, I think as you said. So that's really all I think there is. I think I think uh, I'm ready to, to ring it if you guys want. I just have one more thing to say. This could work well if you're running um Houses of Healing and Fall of Gil Gallad. So you reduce your threat, you <laughs> deal direct damage, and you bring your hero back with Houses of Healing or Fortune of Fate or something of the like. What does yeah. Fall of Gilgalad do when a character leaves, when um, a hero when, leaves? When a hero leaves play, you reduce well, your threat by that hero's printed cost. So I, I will point out that it's when a hero is destroyed. So your Fair hero enough. cannot leave play. Oh, yeah. yeah, but um, this this triggers off a hero being a character being destroyed. Right. Yeah. Yep. Right, right. So right, yeah, right. you you could put uh Fall of Gilgalad on your uh Baragond, and then when he dies, lower your threat by ten. And then do a damage on the way out. Or if you have someone, I guess, like Grimjorn's a better target. Because he's, he's 11 threat. Oh, and he's got 3 damage. Or oh, oh, Glorfindel, because he's in the um, Law Sphere for Houses of Healing. Uh, yep. So you can set up some kind of janky thing like that. <laughs> and do, like, and, and, and build, right, really make the sacrifice worth it. Yeah, you don't want to plan for it. But it's always a great backup just to have. Yeah. And it's just like, yeah. They will go. That's that enemy killed. <laughs> yeah. So <clears throat> before we ring it, let's just talk about the art. Um, I think this art is amazing. Most like most of the art in the game is amazing, but this, I love the like the implied violence. One of the things that I love about the art in the game is it's not all it's not all in your face all the time. You know, there's some there's some very violent things that happen. You know, a lot of the encounter cards show, you know, 
orcs and wargs and you know that are that are doing violent things but here like the shadows of the pikes on the on the door of i would i would guess you know the helm's deep you know because it it's referencing hama and how hama lost at the battle of helm's deep or died at the battle of helm's deep you know like like just the implied violence just is one of those things that i appreciate about the game like impl like when we talked to caleb about the over sexualizing the female characters you know like the game doesn't do that <laughs> you know it doesn't it doesn't do stuff in your face it's more of a classy take on those sorts of things so this yeah, the art's great it does make me want to play the card <laughs> right <laughs> yeah but uh, yeah i haven't put it in a constructed uh constructed deck so yeah but I've I've seen other players put I've been at the table with it and yeah you know, they just do some extra damage on the on the way out and um like I said it's usually it's in an Imrail Hill deck is where I saw it played right and um might have a little bit uh, I think if you're building um uh, a hundred card vo voyage of perilous voyage perilous, uh, perilous voyage, voyage right. contract deck where your decks a hundred cards um uh, you know you and you got a big chunk of warriors in there then this could be one of those cards that fills that slot too. Yeah. So. Sure. Well, should we Put ring this guy? Ringer. Should we ring this guy? Sure, why not? <laughs> sure, what? I was, I was waiting for somebody. To, Ted was ready to ring this guy three minutes ago. Okay, so, so for anybody at home who doesn't know or you know has maybe forgotten, we have a highly scientific yet arbitrary system where we rank a card on a scale from one to ten, where one is the best card in the game. Uh, it's the one card to rule them all. And a card that we rank as a ten is a card that we throw back into the fiery chasm from whence it was made. So, Ted, what do you think? Oh, boy. Um, I'm very generous because, you know, you guys know my stance. Every place has a card in the card pool. Right. Uh, and this one does. And this one does. I'm not saying that it, it doesn't because we just named uh, the few cases where it uh, can can be very uh, effective when you pair it with, you know, the the heroes that we discussed and, and the ones you guys mentioned. But it's it's still towards the bottom uh, there's usually better choices depending on what you're trying to do to, to help you defend, even to get more attack. There's better ways to, you know, to boost your attackers to just do more damage consistently. So because of all that, I'm going to probably, I'm going to give it an eight. Okay. Uh, Grant, what do you think? I want to give it a nine. I see the, there's potential uses for it. There may be some fun little factors there that you can play around with but it's not consistent and you're probably nine times out of ten going to cut this card down. <laughs> nine times. That's why it's a nine. That's why I gave it a nine. Yep. Um, for me, I'm going to give this card also a nine, but I'm going to take it from the other way. Is I'm going to say, like, you would imagine that a card that I've never played or that I would not play that or that I've cut from a deck consistently when I try to make a direct damage deck would get a ten. But I think that the reason why I can appreciate this card, I give it a nine, is because this game is really good at getting into the little nooks and crannies of deck building where you need certain cards or you want to have options for cards that are different and unique. And it's not just always, you know, build your deck this way. So because this gives the deck builder some options about, you know, um, direct damage or it gives somebody, you know, you have one extra card slot and you're running like Ted, like you said, you know, uh, you know, you're running a lot of warriors because it's a Prince Emerald deck or, you know, you just happen to be running a whole bunch of Rohan warriors or I don't know, whatever, you know, you're like, oh, I can, I can put this in here. It may be like a, a fun one of card to just, see what happens and you know so so you know for that reason that's why it's not a 10 for me because it's it it's just a creative a, a creative way that fills another niche although it's not going to i'm not going to use it anytime soon it still seems like a it's 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 still useful like grant like you or like ted you said you know every card has a place so yep 
So anyways, everybody, that's it. That's the end of the show. And please join us again as we talk about more cards from the game. See you next week. Do you love the content? Here's what you can do to stay connected. Become a patron. The money collected through Patreon goes into keeping the lights on here at the podcast. We love our patrons and you can join at many different levels. Visit patreon.com slash card talk 2018. You can subscribe to us, whether you're watching our YouTube channel or you're listening to us in your favorite podcatcher. Hit the subscribe button to get notifications of all our new episodes. Didn't know we were an audio podcast? Find us by searching Card Talk to get access to our 120 plus regular episodes. Didn't know we were a video channel? Find us by searching Card Talk L-O-T-R L-C-G on YouTube and there you can find not only our regular episodes, but you can find our bonus playthroughs and other content related to the game. Want to get a hold of Ted, Grant, or myself? Feel free to email the podcast at cardtalk2018 at gmail.com.